What's good YouTube, it's Mike, and today we're gonna be unboxing my EOS R. Let's get into it. All right guys, so today we're gonna be unboxing my EOS R. I did sell my Sony a7 III to get the EOS R, but I'm shooting on the a7S II, so, so I'm still shooting Sony. I just have the EOS R as my primary camera now. I'm not here to talk about why that is. I'm just here to unbox this so that if you want to see an unboxing, there you go. I have the EOS R body. I also have the EOS R drop-in filter mount adapter for the EF to EOS R and the BGE22 battery grip. All right, so the first thing we're gonna unbox is the drop-in filter adapter. Pop this open. You get warranty cards, manuals, all that good stuff. And the actual adapter is gonna be here in some bubble wrap. These bubbles, they're really thick bubbles, they're hard to pop. <laughs> so it comes in this little pouch. And again, if you're buying Canon stuff, make sure that it's US and you have the warranty card at least. The warranty card is how they determine if it's legit US model or not. And if it doesn't have this, it's gonna be hard as hell to get them to touch it. They may not even touch it. So if you buy it on eBay, it may be gray market, make sure it's US and they have that card. So that goes for anything that I'm unbo unboxing here. So this is the EF2 EOS R drop-in filter adapter. It has this nice ND filter in here. So we can pop these caps off. And you can see as I turn this, dark light. So it's pretty cool. And it's like a C200 where you have built-in ND filters. It really doesn't have a lot to it other than you mount your EF glass to it. You got a pouch for it. If you take this thing out, you don't really have anywhere to put it. They do sell a clear one here, but I'm not sure why you'd wanna buy it. The thing that I've noticed is without this thing in here, this thing doesn't really function. So I don't know why, but this has to be in here. So you can't really just take it out and put like a piece of gaff tape over the hole like I was gonna do. It didn't work, I don't know why. And you have to pay 129 bucks for a clear one when the standard adapter is only 99 bucks. So that logically doesn't make sense. You just have a release button here. And I mean, that's pretty much it. This thing is in here spring loaded. Their adapter, so it's circular in the front, the adapter. Most camera adapters are like rectangular sensors kind of shape, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what it is. It's just an adapter with a drop-in filter, which is perfect. Doesn't work perfect. Autofocus it does. Like I said, look out for my review on this. There's a plus and minus thing here you can roll. And I will definitely be doing a review on this and tell you why I'm saying that some of the stuff doesn't work. Some of it does. Great product. Worth $400? No. Yeah, by the way, it's 400 bucks. The BG E22. These names are just killing me. Battery grip for the EOS R. Cool thing about this battery grip is it does come with a wall charger. A wall charger with the USB-C. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Also warranty cards. Well, is there a warranty card in here? Huh, I don't see a warranty card. Ooh, may have to contact uh, b &H about that. There is a manual in there, no warranty card. Maybe I popped it in another box, I don't know. We'll figure it out. It comes with these little caps, little caps, pop them off. There are places for you to put your battery door here and then the little seal here for the connector here. So you do have that option, pins. The thing I do like about this one versus other manufacturers is the Canon dials are already pretty good. USB-C port in the front. Again, this is used for charging. The reason they give you a power adapter is you can actually put the batteries in here, have this on the camera, and charge the batteries while they're in here, which is just genius. It's just genius. The lock mechanism, what I like about it is it's got some flat pieces. It's a lot easier to turn than most of them. Most of them just got a bunch of prongs and they're really hard to turn. I found it really easy to lock this one. The buttons are just like the ones on the body. And you'll see like a charge indicator here 
this charge indicator tells you which battery that is charging and it'll light up when that battery is charging and go off when it's fully charged. This was a very good buy. I think it was 250 bucks, which is honestly a great price. All this stuff was on sale except for the adapters. I think this was more around like 350 normal price, but the adapters weren't really on sale, just like the main camera stuff. This is the actual Canon grip and it's, it's nice. I, I like it. And now the big elephant in the room. EOS R this way. Manuals, warranty card, all here. Plus plus. You get in this package a USB C cable, which I didn't even use. USB C cable, this is good to have. This little thing here is like, it goes on the side of the body. Sony gives you these, and it kind of just holds your cables for tethering and stuff, like audio cables, HDMI cables. It's, it's really good to make sure your cables don't really get pulled out and all that good stuff. So this is a really good thing to have. A lot of people throw these out. I would honestly just keep it. It's great to have. Battery, so you get your Canon battery, of course. Canon battery, they have pretty good battery life. This is the LPE6N battery. You can get them pretty cheap. It's like an existing battery. Another plus. This plastic in this box is a little weird. Like, this is all that's protecting your camera. This, I mean, Sony uses cardboard. I don't know what's better, but this just seems dinky. I'd like if every camera manufacturer would make a box that's just like the Ronin boxes, which is foam and can be used as a case to put the camera back into when you're not using it. It's genius and you end up using it rather than throwing it away. Whereas this box is just going to sit in my closet and be pointless. Battery charger. I honestly didn't use this at all. Not yet. Um, because I can charge them in the grip. That grip charger comes in handy, I'm telling you. Get it. This is the camera strap. I'm not a camera strap person. I don't really use camera straps. I may put this one on because I was thinking about, you know, when you put it over your neck and you use it for stabilization. Since this doesn't have IBIS, I may want to do that. Um, I do use the Peak Design stuff. You may or may not have seen my video, but you can go check out my video on the Peak Design stuff. I really recommend that stuff, but this is a camera strap that may or may not get used, so we'll see. Last but not least, the body. I'm gonna take this big old box, which is like literally twice the size of the Sony box. We're gonna put it down here. The EOS R, comes in this little foam paper, and we'll pull it out. Boom. Now I'm gonna steal something from Frodo's photo and I'm gonna do like a sniff test on it. Not really a sniff test, I'm just gonna kinda see what it smells like. It smells like the inside of like an old shoe. It really does. It's for grip wise, it's like amazing. These battery doors are nice and like a thick rubber. I love that over like the Sony stuff too. Uh, the only thing is like the ice piece does not come off, but it's really squishy, I guess. I mean, maybe it comes off. I don't think it comes off. It looks like it's screwed down in there. You can replace it. There's a diopter that I don't use. Menu, all the buttons, I mean, they have a little clickiness to it. They're okay. The dials, I love the dials. Like, it's like this ridge on all the dials that you kind of know that you're pushing them. One thing I don't like is the power button. It's like this on and off switch thingy. I don't. You just never remember that you have it on. With the Sony's, it's always near the shutter. You always have your hand there, so I always know to flick it and turn it on and off. But yeah, I always know to turn it on and off. There's like a function button. There's not a lot of custom buttons. I mean, there's different buttons here, and then this little touch slight swipey thing. Honestly, it sucks. I thought maybe people were wrong about that. That's one of the things that I can totally agree that it sucks. The flippy out screen is awesome. The sensor for the screen is a little haywire. It just, it goes off way too often switching from viewfinder to screen. So I ended up setting it to screen. Ergonomically, it's, it's, it's great. And then the SD card comes out pretty good. There's a few things that I don't like about it that I'll, I'll definitely talk about in my review. You do get that little shutter mechanism coming down. Uh, do not touch that. You may ruin your camera. But just imagine it'd be really flimsy. And then all the, like I said, all the buttons feel pretty nice. It feels good in the hand. 
This is a nice camera. And as far as putting this battery grip on, you literally just take battery door off with this little switch here. Little switch. And you pop off this little rubber piece. And on your battery grip, on the side right here, you have this place to put the rubber piece, and you have a place to put your battery door. So they just kind of go in there. That's pretty standard for battery grips. So you don't lose the stuff. You just slide it in. And the grip just makes it feel like a lot better. Like it's just crazy, crazy. The ergonomics of this thing, like the Sony's are small and they're cool and all that stuff. But I, it's just something about a mirrorless camera that just feels good. Like I didn't get into Sony for the small size, honestly. I got into it because it was full frame and they did a great video. But I'm not a I'm not worried about size. This thing feels awesome. And I did do the update and the IAF for video is just it's on another level, honestly. And then this little thing, like I said, I think it, you would have to like pull up all these tabs. I haven't used it yet. Pull up all these tabs, like so. You'd have to lift this big tab up. So it only works for your USB-C and your HDMI. That's cool. Guess they didn't think we'd ever want it for audio. But yeah, it kind of just, it's for tethering. Kind of just goes on there. And you can wrap the cables around this little thing, slide it back in. And yeah, it just gives you a way to stop from pulling your cables out, which is really good. But see, like stuff like this, like it's in the way. <laughs> I can't open my screen when you have this on. So maybe that's why this comes out. Yeah. Nope. Can't, yeah, can't do it. So I don't know. It's just some of these things like design wise, they're good to have, but they don't always all work together. I'm glad it doesn't have the little things on the side for the camera strap that rattle around like the Sony's I always take those off this is a lot nicer that it's not gonna make any noise here goes the adapter so again adapter would just go on the camera like so and you can mount any of your EF lenses on it so I have this Tokina 11 to 16 great lens high quality very sharp it does fringe a lot at the 11 millimeter I got it mainly for 4k because the cool thing is with this camera on 4k you can use APS-C lenses that you couldn't use on like the Canon full frame stuff it gets rid of some of the crop factors so come on here we go so turn it on so you can kind of hear it but yeah if you I don't know if you can see the screen right here but if I if I drop this filter you see the screen gets dark light so that's that's how easy it is to turn the filter now it does creep a little bit honestly but you can hear that that's just this lens not every lens is gonna make that loud loud noise so a lot of the Canon stuff is really good and is not gonna make that noise so just kind of take that with a grain of salt. See, I forget that I'm turned and that is not off. This camera is, is pretty, pretty good. I've been using it and so far I'm, I'm happy with it. But yeah, hopefully this unboxing was just helpful and letting you know what comes in the box. I know a lot of people like to watch unboxings. I know I definitely do, especially when I'm waiting on a camera that didn't come in yet. Yeah, whenever you do get your camera in, it's gonna be a very enjoyable user experience. Um, I promise you that. It may not overwhelm in the spec department, but ergonomically and ease of use and the user friendliness of it is very nice. Now we're not even gonna talk about menus because I don't have a problem with the Sony menus. I know where everything's at. I didn't know where everything is in this. This The menus in this were actually more confusing for me. So yeah, that's my unboxing of the EOS R. All right guys, so if you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. I'll get back to you immediately. Hit that like button if you liked the video. Subscribe to the channel for more content just like this and hit the notification bell if you're into that. That's a wrap.